I am Felicity Johnson, and this week is finals week, and I'm about to turn in my last Biblical Languages final of my undergraduate career and be done with all of my Greek and Hebrew classes. So I thought I would take this video and kind of walk you through what my undergraduate experience looked like studying Biblical Languages at college. So if you're interested in studying Biblical Languages as a major, please keep watching. Okay, so first I thought I would take you guys through like the structure of what the major looked like and what classes I actually had to take in order to get this degree. So at my school, it's a liberal arts university, so everyone has to take the same core classes. So that's classes like world literature, American government, some science classes, and like a math class. So I had to do those for my degree. But then specifically for the Biblical Languages major, there's another set of classes and you have to take those to end up with a degree in Biblical Languages. To pursue this degree, at my school at least, it probably varies from university to university, you can either have a Greek emphasis or a Hebrew emphasis, and I have a Hebrew emphasis. So everyone in the degree has to take elementary Hebrew 1 and 2 and elementary Greek 1 and 2. And then there's another pool of classes where you get to choose some of each of them. So. All the classes available are Elementary Greek 1, Elementary Greek 2, Elementary Hebrew 1, Elementary Hebrew 2, and then Greek Readings 1 and 2, Hebrew Readings 1 and 2, and Greek Exegesis 1 and 2, and element, uh, Hebrew Exegesis 1 and 2. So if you want to have a double emphasis, which you're able to do, you can, you can take all classes in both emphases, but otherwise you have to take the elementary of both and then you can choose up here. So you need to take six classes total. And then in addition to those, which are the language classes, it's required at my school that you have a Christian studies minor in addition to the major. And that gives you an opportunity to use the different skills that you're learning in practice as you are taking different classes on different books of the Bible and like theology classes and different things like that. So now I'm going to tell you guys kind of like what the structure of the different classes looks like. So for this degree, you don't really learn as much how to speak the language since it's a dead language, which is kind of sad because you end up studying it for three years and I don't know how to introduce myself in Hebrew, which is kind of sad. But it's okay because I can read some of the Bible. Okay, so the focus of most of these classes is more on reading and grammar. And I know they're switching how they're structuring the Hebrew classes to focus on conversation a little bit more so that the students will be able to speak Hebrew a little bit better. But since it's Biblical Hebrew, it's not spoken anymore. And the same with Greek, it's the Biblical Greek, not Modern Greek or he Modern Hebrew. So they try and focus more on reading since it's not really practical to learn to speak them. The structure of it is mainly focused on grammar, so you have to memorize a lot of like charts and lists and vocabulary which gets a little tedious at times, and it's really detail-oriented, but it's worth it, and if you push through, then you can definitely make it. Just like be aware that you're not really going to be learning how to speak these languages. You're just going to know more how to read and write them. Not really write them very much. Writing is still hard, but read them. And so since it is based on mainly reading and comprehension and like analyzing the different parts of grammar, there are like a good number of quizzes and tests that kind of just review what you know. There's not any conversational quizzes. There are in the Hebrew classes, like in the later years of learning Hebrew, they have some like pronunciation quizzes where we have to read a passage of Hebrew out loud, but we don't have to analyze it at all or like talk about what it means or translate it. So it is just testing our pronunciation. At my university, we don't have very many Biblical Languages majors, so most of the class sizes were really small, probably like five people once we got going. And it depends from year to year. Sometimes there's more than others. And in the elementary classes, they're usually a lot bigger because people with maybe a Hebrew minor will be taking those, or a Christian studies major that just wants to learn more might take the Greek class. It just depends. So those usually end up being bigger, but then the farther up you go, the smaller the class size ends up. And it's honestly really nice to have a small class size because you're able to have like a close community of language learners and as one of my professors always said, language learning is best done in community because you're able to like learn off of each other and see how y'all are taking the concepts and understanding them. If someone understands a concept really well that you're having issues with, y'all can like see each other for help and that's really helpful. 
And another reason why this is helpful is since it's such a small department, our school doesn't offer tutoring for Hebrew. It does for Greek, but not for Hebrew. And, and that makes it difficult just if you're having trouble understanding the concept to not have a tutoring option available. But if you have your classmates that you can talk to, that can help you like sort out some of the issues. Okay, so when I first came into college, I didn't have any background in Greek or Hebrew. I had taken Latin and German in high school. So, so I had no background in either language, but it ended up working out really well because they assume that you have no background and the elementary levels start out at the very beginning. You start out learning the alphabet in both languages and you start out learning how to actually form words and pronounce them. So it definitely starts where you don't need any background in either language at all. And by the end of the program, I'm definitely not fluent even in reading them but I know a lot more than I did then, and, and I have the tools and the concepts to be able to figure out what I don't know, and so I can progress on my learning that way. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for checking it out, and I hope if you're considering studying biblical languages at college, it was really helpful. And I'm going to be trying to making more videos about the whole world of biblical languages in the future, because there's a lot to know. So if you're interested, please subscribe and you can check those out later as they come out. And then also if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and leave a comment. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment with those two and I'd love to check them out and see kind of what you are thinking. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in some way. Let me know if you have any questions like I said and I'll be happy to get back with you. Thank you!